Hello everyone, this is Doug Turner with Thor's eLearning Solutions and today I'm excited to discuss our latest course release of Fundamentals of Ductile Iron Part 1. Before getting to ductile iron, allow me to first address what is Thor's. Thor's, the helpful online resource site, provides educational courses for a variety of manufacturing industries including metal castings, polymers, gears, engineering drawings, and many, many more. Through an interactive format full of navigable flowcharts, automated GIFs, and full-length 3D animations with voiceovers, the Thor's learning experience is as unique as it is beneficial. Now, let's talk about ductile iron. For starters, what is made with ductile iron? Well, a variety of automotive parts are made with ductile iron. Parts such as steering knuckles, crankshafts, control arms, and differential housings are all commonly made with ductile iron. In addition, centrifugally cast pipes are as well. Next, we might ask, what makes ductile iron unique? In a word, ductility. Compared to other metals and cast irons, ductile iron has a greater range of elongation. Ductile irons are also considered strong, easy to machine, and resistant to impact loads. Let's look at other specifics within the course. This course will show you how to identify various types of iron within the cast iron family, including characteristics and chemistry associated with each type. This course also describes what occurs during the melting and solidification of ductile iron, how alloying elements affect the chemistry of ductile iron, and how the iron is treated with magnesium alloys. This course will also teach you what occurs during the inoculation of ductile iron. Let's look at that area more in depth. So, what does inoculation mean? Well, one of the basic tenets of ductile iron is that it must have nodular graphite. This means that when the carbon in ductile iron precipitates, it must do so into nodular or spherical form. Ductile iron micrographs are easily recognizable due to the dark nodules in the matrix. There are several steps involved in creating ductile iron with nodular graphite, and one of the most important steps is inoculation. Inoculation for ductile irons is the process of adding ferrosilicon alloys to the molten metal. The ferrosilicon provides nucleation sites on which the graphite can precipitate and grow. In addition, inoculation ensures that the nodules are spherical and that there are plenty of them in the matrix. When is inoculation performed? In most cases, the later the better. If added to the molten iron too early, the inoculants will dissolve and not be a part of the graphite precipitation. This is known as inoculation fading. Inoculants can be added in the ladle of molten metal before mold pouring begins, in the stream of molten metal during pouring, or in the actual molds placed somewhere in the gating system. Ductile Iron Fundamentals Part 1 has a great 3D animation that discusses some of the important aspects of inoculation. The course also provides additional tools to help learners understand inoculation, such as this table showing the various chemistry ranges of elements found in standard ferrosilicon alloys. The amount of information in this course on inoculation and other aspects of ductile iron are truly incredible. And to test your knowledge, the courses come equipped with interactive quiz questions. So please, head on over to Thors.com today and check out the amazing services we provide. And be sure to look for Ductile Iron Fundamentals Part 1, along with any of the other courses we have on machining, heat treating, rubber extrusion, threaded fasteners. The list goes on and on and on. So thank you for joining us today. I'm Doug Turner with Thors. We want to give a special thank you to our ductile iron expert, Al Aligarsami. And as always, we'll see you next course.